CTV News at 5 with Hudson Mack. And the heavy rains are being blamed for washing out a section of the highway to Gold River about 15 minutes outside Campbell River. Part of Highway 28 collapsed this afternoon. It's now closed in both directions as crews assess the damage. An update on the estimated time of opening is expected around 8 o'clock tonight. To get more information on that, visit drivebc.ca. CTV's Gord Kerbis has been on the scene all afternoon. He'll have a full report and an update at 6.30 on Vancouver Island Report. Well, the weekend storm did uh, bring some good news for the folks who are counting down the days till they can hit the slopes. Mount Washington received a large dump of snow, enough for the resort to move up opening day again this year. More than 80 centimeters fell over the weekend, covering the mountain in a thick white blanket. Staff is preparing and grooming the runs today as the resort prepares to open early for the fourth season in a row. Opening day on Mount Washington is now set for November 30th. Looking at the forecast, there's supposed to be two more systems coming this week. Uh, the biggest one on Thursday with a lot of wind, so that could mean another you know, 20 plus centimeters. So on top of what we already have, that's a, a substantial snow base to start the season with. And uh, yeah, that, again, it just makes the decision to open early that much easier. For an update and to see the uh, mountain cams, visit mountwashington.ca. Well, the city of Victoria is now negotiating the numbers after making its pick, choosing a contractor for the new Johnson Street Bridge project. City Council has selected PCL Constructors West Coast for the project. Three companies submitted bids, but the mayor says PCL's proposal was the best fit for the city's guidelines. We're excited. We still have uh, the three traffic lanes. We still have the two bike lanes on, on side. We have the Galloping Goose Trail that comes across the pedestrian walkway. All of those elements that uh, we're excited about having a bridge for the future, uh, that will be there. There'll be about 900 jobs created, lots of uh, opportunity for our local economy and local business to be, to be involved in it. That's an exciting piece as well during these economic times. And PCL knows something about bridges. It uh, put together the Alex Fraser Bridge in the Lower Mainland, the longest cable stayed span in the world when it was completed in 1986. The MMM Group will serve as the engineering consultant for the Blue Bridge project, overseeing the final design and seeing it through to completion. The council still needs to review the contracts to nail down the final cost. Construction is slated to begin in the spring. The bridge is scheduled to be complete by March of 2016. A wall of water came crashing down into the busiest emergency room in BC today, forcing it to close its doors. It happened at Surrey Memorial Hospital this morning when a water main from a construction site next to the hospital burst. The Fraser Health Authority says the water was not contaminated with any sewage and does not pose a public health hazard. But the ER was forced to shut down and patients were moved into other facilities. The flood did do significant damage to the Surrey Memorial ER. It's going to be closed until tomorrow at the earliest. A man who was shot by police during a standoff on the Lower Mainland has now died. The man was wounded on November 8th after a lengthy standoff outside a new Westminster casino. Witnesses say he was firing rounds in the parking lot before police arrived. He died in the hospital on Sunday. His name has not been released. The province's Special Investigations Unit is looking into the case. Parents with sick children have a new way to get the answers they need at Victoria General Hospital. The Patient and Parent Information Center opened today on the hospital's pediatric ward. It was designed by nursing students with a mandate of providing families with better access to a wide range of community-based resources and information on health and parenting. For the community, whenever children are admitted, they always come in and they're sick and the focus is on the sick child. And what we want was to have a resource for the family so that they see their child is getting better, going healthy, returning to the natural state, to what the healthy state that they were in before. Children, they always are growing, so even when we want to get them to their current state when they came into the hospital, we want to get them better so that they continue to grow and meet their milestones. The project was supported by the Children's Health Care Foundation, the Arbor Counseling Centre and True Value Foods. Well, we're very proud to share this with you. BC's new Lieutenant Governor presented deserving British Columbians with the Queen's Royal Honour today. A special ceremony held at Government House as Lieutenant Governor Judith Guichon honoured people for the work they have done in their community. She presented the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal to several recipients, including CTV's Bruce Williams. I'm humbled and I'm honoured to be in this company and I'm very privileged to be associated with a group like the United Way 
who put me forward for this award. So I'm, I'm, I'm honored to accept it, but I'm, I'm really quite humbled by it all. I think they get awards like this. It's important for our community to recognize the amazing people that we recognize today. People who don't count on getting an award, but over the years, decades really, serve their community so well. And uh, I mean, our three nomine uh, nominees, were su they're such humble people, but they work so hard. I think they're just thrilled to be uh, recognized and honored in this way. The dozens of people who are honored include members of the Canadian Red Cross, Girl Guides of Canada, and the Submariners Association of Canada. And we congratulate our Bruce Williams, who has done an awful lot of good in the community up and down Vancouver Island and is richly deserving of the recognition. And Union Job Action is also coming to both campuses of Camosun College. QP support staff will pick it tomorrow and on Wednesday. After voting 96% in favor of job action earlier this month, Camosun says a number of campus services will be disrupted, and if unionized faculty members decide not to cross picket lines, classes could be cancelled. Money is at the center of this dispute. The workers have been without a contract since 2010. The University of Victoria is doing a study of itself, looking at the economic effect that it has on its surrounding community. A new university economic report shows that UVic contributes $3.2 billion a year to communities in Greater Victoria. The report shows university research and post-secondary education have helped to drive up salaries, creating prosperity. And UVic says in addition to creating earning power, it is inspiring global innovation. The final category focusing on the impacts of our research, close to a billion dollars a year of net economic benefit to this region as a result of university-driven research. I think that's a major finding. But everything from direct spending, from student spending, from visitor spending, from the uh, added uh, earning power of graduates uh, through to the research and technology transfer side of the university results in a major contribution to this region that uh, UVic is, is one of the pillars of our economy locally. Um, you know, it rivals the size of some of the other sectors, such as shipbuilding. So uh, education is significant in our community. UVic is certainly the leading institution in the community. The report also shows international student spending at UVic helps to stimulate the greater Victoria economy, from shopping to rental suites. Visiting students pump a large chunk of uh, the economic input back into the community. The Liberal government says tonight it's coming down hard on caucus staff members who used government time to work on party-sponsored attack ads. The ads appear on a website that is critical of NDP leader Adrian Dix. Can'tafforddix.ca is the address. The site was designed and paid for by the Liberals, but some of the work and the brainstorming was done by political staff in Victoria on government-issued computers. The government says all caucus staff have been sent an email that reminds them that government time is for government work. In a statement, the B.C. Liberal caucus says the people involved have been spoken to directly, but that's not good enough for some New Democrats, including former party leader Carol James. The public is tired of this kind of thing. This is a pattern that we've seen from the BC Liberals. This is not the first time we've seen, whether it's the Burnaby Hospital example or, or $15 million of taxpayer dollars paid for advertising. The public's had enough of this kind of politics. The Liberal Party also created riskydicks.ca and can'taffordcummins.ca, a site critical of Conservative leader John Cummins. The Premier's office isn't commenting on the sites or the work that went into building them. The rain that washed out the road came with storm force winds and that forced BC ferries to cancel sailings, leaving thousands of people stranded on both sides of the water. Sailings between Vancouver Island, the mainland and the Gulf Islands were suspended last night due to the high winds. Last night, people at the Departure Bay Terminal were forced to wait several hours before they could finally set sail for Horseshoe Bay. I mean, you go through this all the time. I mean, I've been out in worse weather than this and this, they've, they've run it. And now we've got to wait till one o'clock or so, only because they don't want this ship on the wrong side. Getting to a hotel at 6 o'clock in the morning and not rid of my cup of tea, I'd rather go back. And uh, my wife is just inside, so we're going to have a Starbucks and, uh, and then we're going to rest a little bit and we'll get home eventually. Okay. They're the only ferry provider. That we, don't ha we can't choose another option. When an airline cancels a flight due to weather, they, they say, it's so we're sorry, it's not our fault. But, you know, here's a, a food voucher. Here's a hotel rate that we've organized for you. BC Ferries, nothing. What was supposed to be the 7 o'clock sailing from Departure Bay last night finally left for the Lower Mainland at 1 o'clock this morning.
And classes are cancelled tomorrow and Wednesday for students at North Island College. QP support staff there walk off their jobs at campuses in Campbell River, the Comox Valley, Port Alberni and Euclid. Students will be able to access study space from 9 till 3.30 both days, but faculty say they will respect the picket lines. The union says it's been without a contract since 2010 and says the B.C. government refuses to sign off on a new collective agreement. RCMP and the Nanaimo are asking for your help tonight as they try to find a missing girl. She is 14-year-old Jade Corbett, last seen Thursday morning when she was dropped off at school. Jade's about 5 foot 4, 46 kilograms, that's about 99 pounds. She has freckles, brown eyes and long black hair. Jade was wearing a black and grey hip-length coat with black skinny pants and black suede boots. RCMP say Jade is involved in high-risk activities and they'd like to get her home. If you see her, you're asked to contact the Nanaimo RCMP. And the Harbour City Mounties are also on the hunt for a wannabe barista after six coffee machines were stolen from three Nanaimo Starbucks locations. The Verissimo coffee makers were all stolen on Friday. These machines sell for about $200 a piece and they were taken two at a time from the Terminal Park Mall Starbucks, the University Mall location, and the Starbucks at Country Club. RCMP have just a vague description of the thief. In this case, a male, a white Caucasian in his mid-twenties would walk in, simply pick up the two boxes and walks out of the store. In the incident at Terminal Park, he was seen getting into a vehicle. No description was provided, however. In the incident on University Mall, he walked in, took the two, then was last seen walking along Fifth Street. There were no witnesses at the Country Club location. RCMP are reviewing surveillance footage. If you have any information about the thefts or know of someone trying to fence high-end coffee makers, you're asked to contact Nanaimo RCMP or Crime Stoppers.